I, I, I wanted to test how good Schwab works. You know, Charles Schwab. And Charles Schwab, I've got a click and mortar uh, model. This is a beautiful model, far superior to Merrill Lynch model. Schwab is a lower cost operator than Merrill Lynch. There's a huge difference between the cost of operation of Schwab and the cost of operation of Merrill Lynch. And as a customer, unless you are a multi-billion dollar customer, actually working with Schwab could be more beneficial for smaller customers. You walk into any Schwab outlet, and there are hundreds of them across the United States, for instance. You say, my name is Sam Swaminathan, my account number is 21152005, to whoever you encounter in that place, whoever. You don't know the guy from Adam. He says, okay. He logs in your number that you gave him, and up comes your entire history, your grandfather's history, your girlfriend's history, everyone's history on the screen. This guy has complete access to your data. He knows, I mean, he can see, he doesn't know, he can see what you were doing, what you have done. And based upon that, he can give you advice. Now, of course, you also can have a designated financial consultant. But let us say that my designated financial consultant is in Stockton, California, because Stockton is the closest city where a Schwab office exists to the little village in which I live. But now, right now, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, which is 3,000 miles away from Tracy, California. I can walk into a Schwab shop. Literally, they are little boutiques, never more than five or six people in one office. So it's very, it, sound, it seems very personalized. You're not walking into a Walmart where you get lost. And you can actually have a conversation with a guy who in two minutes time picks up all the information about you. And that, that's, that, that's what sharing information is all about. And that's what Schwab's click and mortar is all about. I mean, it's really fascinating how Schwab works and Merrill Lynch has not got it right. Merrill Lynch just doesn't know how to do this. They will ask, your financial consultant will treat you like, you know, you're her boyfriend and not share your information with anyone. It's quite a big difference, the way it seems to work. Now, ease of doing business, my friends, is a philosophy right on the top. Now, underneath this is a whole load of small things and I will share some of them with you. There are four seminal questions to ask and they are as follows. How you treat your customers, do you treat them differently, do you learn from them, do you keep them, and do you organize around them? Now, I'll give you quick examples of each one, so you will get a feel for what I'm talking about in each and every case. Here are some examples of treating customers differently. Instead of giving all your customers the same thing, how about redefining them, or redesigning your, uh, your uh, offerings? And the way it works is this. This is a Taco Bell. Now, some years back, this is what Taco Bell did. John Martin, at that time when Pepsi Foods bought Taco Bell, John Martin was heading Taco Bell. He asked around, listen, who is our customer? And uh, he didn't get any meaningful answers. So he said, uh, let's find out who our customers are. And he conducted a research. The outcome of the research was as follows. He said, we have three types of customers. Type one customer, age group 15 to 24. Lots of time, no money. <laughs> customer type two, 25 to 45. Lots of money, no time. I'll come back to see a little later. So what they did was they said, we've got two completely different classes of customers. The 15 to 24 year old guys have plenty of time, but little money. So they came up with the 59 cent, 79 cent, and 99 cent menu for that target. Then they went to the higher age bracket people, where it's man and woman, or man and man, women and women, and it often happens these days. But there are two earners, two wage earners, right? But they have absolutely no time because they're busy making money. They both go to work from 7 a.m. till 9 p.m. They want a quick buy. They're in a hurry all the time. Plenty of money, not enough time. 
So they came up with the 395, 495, and 595 menu for these people and said, if we don't serve you in 10 minutes, the food's in the house. Because time was the variable factor now. So they said, 10 minutes flat, we serve you or it's free. But you pay us four, five or six dollars almost. And obviously the margins were huge. So that was type two customer. And then type three is my type, those who hate Mexican food. And they said, listen, don't worry about converting the Sam's of this world to like Mexican chalupa and you know, whatever. Forget them. There are enough type one and type two in this world. Let us concentrate on them. That's what I mean by treating customers differently. 